Hello, Robert Bastian here from Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. I want to talk to you about the role of mucus in sensory neuropathic cough and throat clearing. Now, I'm imagining that a lot of people watching this video are already familiar with the idea of a neurological disorder, a sensory neuropathy, and the uh, idea is that there's a sudden tickle, a sudden dry patch, a sudden pinprick, a feeling of inhaling dust or a dripping mucus sensation or sudden congestion, any kind of sensation that initiates a coughing. Uh, it's a zing of a tickle or a zing of a pinprick or a zing and away they go either coughing or throat clearing. So I'm assuming everyone kind of understands that idea that this can be a sensory neuropathy and the treatment needs to be for the sensory neuropathy. Uh, not We don't treat the uh, we don't remove pins or, or whatever. So uh, the idea is that the, the we have to understand that the, it's the sensation, not the thing that we're, we're interpreting as being there, but it's the actual sensation. Uh, so in other words, if I see somebody who says, oh, doctor, it's like there's a feather in my throat and it's suddenly there. If I say to them, well, do you think there's an actual feather there? They'd say, well, no, of course not. If I say to them, you said there's like this little tiny square of sandpaper. Do you think there's actually sandpaper in your throat? They'd say, well, no, no, I'm just telling you it's like there's sandpaper. It's a feeling of sandpaper. If I said, well, how about a, that person with the feeling of a pinprick? Do you think there's an actual pin in your throat? They'd say, well, no, doctor, I don't believe that. I just think it feels like there's a pin. And same thing for dust. If I say to them, well, you know, this, this dripping, this sensation of dripping, do you think there's actual dripping or is it just the sensation of dripping? They look at me like, what kind of question is that? They say, well, of course, it's mucus. It's, it's mucus. I can feel it. It's dripping mucus. So the reason they are committed to that, that interpretation is that we know pins and feathers and dust and things are not in our throats, but we also know that mucus is in our throats. And so when we have that perception of mucus, we just go directly to the idea that of course it's mucus. Same thing for the person who says, it's like there's suddenly a, a lot of mucus in my throat, that congested feeling and I have to cough. So this is the problem. So let me give you some possible scenarios uh, of mucus and in relation to coughing. Let's look at the person with pneumonia or COPD. They have a lot of mucus. It's they, they are overproducing mucus. And so they, of course, have a sensation of mucus. And of course, they cough and mucus, mucus uh, results. They can spit it out. So that's not the kind of mucus problem that we're talking about, the mucus perception we're talking about. That's actual mucus. Well, here's a second scenario where the person says, oh, doctor, I get that dripping. I cough and cough, and half the time it's dry. I never produce any mucus. And so sometimes they'll say, can't you give me something to get the mucus up? And then I point out, well, you've been on six mucus medicines, and it hasn't helped. So that's one uh, scenario. The second scenario is, though, even more difficult because the person says, oh, I get the dripping or I get that, that congested feeling and oh, I start to cough and I cough and I cough and I cough and after 20 or 30 seconds, I bring up a lot of mucus and can't you give me something to get it up sooner so that I can stop coughing? That's the even harder one to, to drag the person off the idea that maybe part of what you're experiencing is just the sensation of mucus you're experiencing a sensory neuropathy that is being manifested as this, as this uh, very real, not imaginary, not psychological. It's an actual sensation of mucus, but it's not uh, physical mucus. So that's the problem. Well, let's do a story to illustrate the problem further. This is a middle-aged woman, and she's been coughing for 10 years, as I remember. And she says, oh, doctor, I, I, my cough is caused by dripping mucus. Well, I'm in the middle of an examination. I have the scope in her nose, and we're looking all through her upper air digestive tract. 
And in the middle of it, she starts to say in a kind of agitated way, oh, doctor, it's dripping, it's dripping. I, I am going to cough, it's dripping, it's dripping. And I managed, just, in, just before the coughing starts, I managed to say to her, where, where is it dripping? And she says, oh, in my throat, in my throat. And I say, can you point to where? And she points to right here, middle of her neck. And that lower right picture is where I'm looking and I don't see any dripping. And by the way, I've passed through her nasal pharynx and when we have a cold, we've all had that experience of dripping mucus during a cold or whatever. So that mucus doesn't just materialize in our throats, it comes from our noses and it drains backwards. And so I'm interested that her nose is pristine. This little tiny bit of saliva right there doesn't count. I can show you nose after nose, much more impressive mucus, but they're not coughing. And this person is coughing, and she has a very unimpressive nasopharynx. The, the train doesn't materialize right at the, at the train station. It has to come down the tracks. And so I'm looking down the tracks, and I'm saying, I don't see a train coming. Uh, and then I'm looking in the throat, and now she begins to cough, and I keep watching for some dripping or some mucus, and it never occurs. And so you see there's an example of the person has this profound sensation of mucus dripping, but there's nothing, no actual mucus. There is a very real, not imaginary, there's an absolutely real sensation of mucus, but there's no actual mucus. And that explains why she's been treated to the moon and back for mucus, and it's no, nothing has helped her. Here's another one. This is a young man, uh, I think 30-ish, and his story was that he would cough aggressively every few minutes. And I don't want to break your eardrums, but let me, I, this is exactly what it was like. He would go, <coughs> <coughs> so there was a lot of voice in it too. Well, you can imagine he was driving his family and his co-workers crazy. So I said to him, why, why are you doing that? He said, well, because there's mucus. And he pointed to the very central upper chest, just below the throat. He said, there's mucus, and he pointed there. And so I said to him, and he's doing this every few minutes. So I thought, ah, I'll do the, the look down the tracks thing. So, here, <coughs> pardon me, here's his exam, lower left, you see he's got a mucus free throat. I'm using the same picture to illustrate what his throat looked like. Then I numbed him up so that I could look down in his trachea. And I'm looking here at and just below the level where he pointed, and there's no mucus. And again, I would point out when we're producing mucus such that we have to cough every few minutes, uh, we're going to see the, the train that's, that's, you know, 100 yards from the station and uh, a half a mile from the station, and, and I don't see any mucus down there. So I'm even lower in the trachea, illustrating the idea that even from both main stem bronchi, I don't see any mucus. Now he again was someone, because it was such a profound feeling, an actual, a real feeling of mucus, very hard to sort of drag him off the idea, your problem isn't mucus, your problem is uh, sensory neuropathy and you need nerve ending medicines, uh, neuralgia medicines. Well, if this uh, helps, I, I hope this helps, but if you need more information, you can go to Laryngopedia and uh, look at other information uh, in this manner. But there's my story of the interplay between mucus and coughing, and I hope that helps.